This is a parable that kind of sticks in your mind, one that we're somewhat familiar with, but really is pretty dramatic and and concerning in many ways, but also one that we can relate with. Of course, this parable is switching from the last three weeks of the vineyard, and now we're talking about the wedding feast, this wedding banquet of the king. Now, more than likely, almost everyone here has been to a wedding feast, a wedding banquet, and it's always a good time had by all, hopefully, for the most part, unless the bride and groom are fighting, then it's an interesting scenario, isn't it? But for this one, of course, we know that back in Jesus' time, a wedding banquet would go how long? It would be a three-day event. And this is something that you looked forward to. It was going to be a massive and beautiful celebration, especially if it was the king's son. Of course, we'd hear it be like, what? What would we hear? It's like the kingdom of heaven, which will be like, as Isaiah said, a feast of rich food and choice wines. Juicy, rich food and pure choice wines, and delicious root beer, and cinnamon rolls, and everything else. It's going to be a great time. Can you smell the cinnamon rolls? Because I can. They smell delicious. That's after Mass, so a great banquet right behind me. But anyway, it's a banquet where all this would happen. And of course, if you were invited to something like that, you'd look forward to it, wouldn't you? Three-day celebration. This will be amazing. And you'd be waiting by the mail, waiting for that invitation. Because, of course, for you to go there, what would have to happen? You would have to be invited. You know what the beautiful thing is that this parable shows us today? That each and every one of us are invited to this wedding banquet. This wedding banquet, which, of course, refers to heaven. And this parable, at the end of it, what does it say? He sent them out into the streets, and the servants went and invited the bad and good alike. And the hall was filled with guests. Of course, we read on in the parable and hear about the person not wearing the wedding garment. And he was kicked out with a wailing and grinding of teeth. And why was that? He was invited. You'd think if someone's invited, they're not going to be kicked out. Well, he wasn't properly prepared. He wasn't doing good works. That's what it means. To get into heaven, we have to do good works. How do we do this? Well, first and foremost, we accept this invitation from God to follow him. And once again, how beautiful it is that God has invited us. Now, what do we do? Do we accept this invitation to follow him, to do his works, or do we decline it? Well, you're here right now today. So obviously, you accepted an invitation, didn't you? You accepted the invitation from God to come to Mass at 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning. For some of you being extremely tired from the play last night and a play going on in four hours. But you still accepted that invitation. For some of you, maybe you didn't accept that invitation, but your parents did, so they dragged you here. And that's good as well. We had to choose. God is inviting for me to come here, or do I choose to decline and worship the God of the pillow, or the God of Vikings, or fantasy football, or brunch. Which one did you choose? Of course, you chose to come here. But God does not only invite us to come to Mass every week, does he? When we really look at our life, God invites us all the time to follow him. He's always inviting us. Every single day, every single hour, every single moment of the day, he's inviting us to follow him. But in order for us to accept this invitation or decline it, first and foremost, we have to listen. We literally have to stop sometimes and say, God, what do you desire of me? What are you inviting me to do? And so we stop and we listen. And then we make our decision. We either accept his invitation or we decline it. What does it look like to decline God's invitation? Well, for each and every one of us, it's to be something different, because God's inviting each and every one of us to something different. But let me give you an example. Something that I struggle with even now as a priest. So when I'm out in public, and I'm not with fellow Catholics, maybe I'm out with you know, some secular friends, or I'm just out at Chipotle eating my supper sometimes. I'm at the table all by myself, which is okay, I like Chipotle. And I sit there. I'm at the table. Do I make the sign of the cross or not? Do I make the sign of the cross to pray? So I'm going to pray before I eat. Now, of course, you know what God's asking us to do, right? It's simple. Make the sign of the cross. 
But in the back of their mind, we're wondering, what are they going to think about me? Are they going to think I'm some sort of zealot? What if you're with your co-workers and you're out to eat? And they dive right into that juicy hamburger. Maybe you say the prayer in your mind, but you're afraid. Saying, I know God wants me to make the sign of the cross and to do my simple bless us, O Lord, prayer. But can I do it? God, what are you inviting me to do? And if we decline it, how do we feel? Not so hot, not so good, right? Of course, there's other situations too. God is inviting us to follow his will. But so often we may choose false gods. Maybe as a family you've decided you're going to pray every single night together at 9 o'clock. It's a beautiful thing to do. I recommend it. Sometime like that. But all of a sudden the wild are about to go over time. You say, I want to watch the end of the wild game. What are you going to choose? These invitations are always like this. Now these are small ones. What about the big invitations from God? Him saying, I invite you this year finally to sign up for a holy hour. I invite you this year really, really, really to work on stopping that particular sin of yours. I invite you this year to volunteer more with an organization. I invite you to follow the vocation I'm asking you to go down. But we keep on ignoring it. We keep on declining it. Why? Because we're afraid. We're afraid, is doing God's work really worth it? Is accepting this invitation worth it? Of course, when we do accept his invitation, how does it look? It's so much more freeing, isn't it? When we truly follow God's will and what he's inviting us to do? Because when we realize that we're not God, that he is, and we do his good works, it's so much freeing. Abandoning ourselves to God's divine providence, knowing that he will take care of us, that he will continue to bestow his grace upon us. As St. Paul tells us in the letter to the Philippians today, he says when we truly give ourselves over to God, what he says, he says, I can do all things in him who strengthens me. He does not say, I can do anything. No, he says, I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Knowing that God will give us the ability to do things we cannot imagine. Getting out of our comfort zone and finally going and talking to that person at work that we know is desiring to have companionship. Someone to show them love and charity. Writing that letter to your sibling or to your son or daughter you haven't talked to for two years because of a hurt and unforgiveness. But God is inviting you to something greater, to something deeper. How beautiful this is. And once again, this is God doing it freely. He's inviting us to join him and to be in grace, to accept his strength. Of course, we know when we do this, who are we acting like? When we accept God's invitation, we're acting like Christ. Because Jesus Christ, too, had an invitation from God, didn't he? From his Father. The invitation was to accept the cross to die on the cross for us. And what does Jesus say in prayer? Father, if it be your will, I will do it, but let it pass. But God didn't pass up that invitation. He goes, no, I desire for you to die on the cross for human beings, for their nature. And so he does this. And he opens up the gates of heaven for us. He opens up this eternal banquet with us. My brothers and sisters, it's quite simple. God is inviting us to follow him. But we have to choose yes or no. Father Heward is a spiritual director down at St. Paul Seminary. I think I probably shared this before. But he used to say all the time, people would ask him, Father, how long have you been a priest for? And he would say, since I woke up this morning and chose to follow my vocation. The same is true in our life as Christians. How long have we been a Christian for? How long have we been a Catholic for? Well, what do we choose to do this morning? Do we stop and actually ask God and listen to God saying, God, what are you inviting me to do? And when we say yes to it, when we do these good works, not only will we receive that eternal banquet in heaven, but we'll receive strength and grace now. And then we can be like Paul and say, I can do anything because of him who strengthens me. And yes, we'll receive a reward that's greater than choice wines, great food, cinnamon rolls, and root beer we will receive eternal life, eternal life with God, who will give us all that we 
desire.